call this meeting of Ohio County Physical Court to order. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Brother John Cashin. He's not here. So I'm going to see if uh, Jay Raymond will come up and do the prayer and pledge for us. Uh, put the microphone if you don't mind. Um, by the way, I forgot to say, it is uh, January 24th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Thanks, Judge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jay, you'll say a prayer for us. I've been to a court meeting before. Let <laughs> <laughs> me pray. We need to pass an offering plate next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, as always, for your love and your mercy. Fathers, we gather today, these leaders of our community, to make decisions that are prudent to everyone around us. We ask you, Lord, that you would touch them and bless them and, and touch their minds. Tonight, God, we ask you that this meeting be professional, Father, but most of all, we remember that you are the reason that we're all here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll pass the offering plate now. <laughs> Before you have the January 10th uh, minutes, as well as the one for the special call on January 3rd, I need a motion to approve both of them. Second motion. Motion by Ken Callaway, second by Michael McKinney. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like so. Next, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Do we have a motion to approve those? I'll make the motion to approve. Motion by Jason Bullock for discussion. Second? Yeah, for discussion. Okay. We have a motion second. Is there discussion? The Constable radios. Five thousand three hundred. What? Charlie can answer that. What they are? Well, we you mean what well, we buying them or what? Yeah. We we ain't bought radios for the constables since like 2011. I got with the judge and we bought them new radios, new portables. All five constables got them. What did they do with the old ones that the others had? It's just like any radio. Some was beat up. I got two of them back here right now that's broke, unrepairable. I got one can't lost. There ain't but about two or three counties that gives the constables anything like it. I you know that's up to y'all and the judge there. Any further discussion? Further discussion on the uh, none being none? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Um, next we have the USDA grant invoice, which is a pass through, you know, we, we don't, it don't cost us anything, we've got to pay the bill. Charlie, you want to explain it? I do, for the, the members of the court that wasn't here the first time, uh, we got, no, let me go ahead and pass this out. $1.3 million to clean up the river projects. There's 11 sites on there, as you can tell. And if you flip over to the second page, it tells you uh, who got what, what contractor got them. And the way this works is, once we get, we award the bids, they got so many days to get started and get going. Once they get done, we send the bills in, then USDA sends us the money, then we pay them with it. So that's what this is, and uh, 
I'd like to ask them, the court to, well, the, it's got to run through the court system on that, too, for every time there's 11 sites, it's got to go through all the court on that. That was recommended because it's is, federal money. Is these ones that got the bids? That is correct, sir. And there's, you see on the map where they're at, who did, there is, after y'all get done, I do got to ask the court to do one more thing on this. But it's no money out of ours. It's a pass through, like they say, it's a pass through for us. We was just lucky enough, we're the first ones in the state of Kentucky through the NCRS to get the money. The only thing you're doing tonight is approving the one that's done from Kyle Addington. Kyle Addington. Yes. Yeah. They just recommended that it be a motion in the minutes since it's federal money. And it so we just need to make a motion. That's all you know, Yes. Thanks, Craig. That's all you guys got there started and got it done. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion for uh, the finances to be able to use to pay Kyle Addington. Is that what his name is or is it? That is correct. I'll second it. Second by Larry Moore. Like like 10. Jason Bullock, second by Larry Murphy. Well, we have to bring it up again or could we go on and vote to pay them when they're completed or we need to wait? You have to bring up each individual site at a time okay. when they do that. <coughs> Any further discussion? Being done, I'm going to say aye. 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 That motion is approved. With this being said, on site four, site six, I got to ask the court to rebid this. Uh, there's some numbers that came in wrong for the contractors. So we got to re-advertise that to bid for site four to site six. What numbers coming wrong? Site four and site six. They got to be rebid. They come in way over the cubic yard per foot. So we gotta rebid them. I just need court's approval to rebid them. We need to be on that? I y'all did last time. I was just assuming yeah. we would need so to motion. motion Larry Moore for you. Second by Bob Bennett. So you're saying the site they, they they bid bigger than the site actually was? Correct. They bid what it is, it's basically a forty dollar cubic yard and mm -hmm. some of them was 48, 51, so on. So then we went back, talked to the contractors, NCRS, and so we got refitted to get them back down there. Okay. okay. And uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those like to say you, Charlie, you're, you run the bid. You run I got the bid. I got it. Thank you. Uh, we've got to run an ad. Best make, tell us some of the words on this motion. Uh, I'm going to appoint a reapportionment board tonight, and then that board will need to will need to advertise that we're fixing to do the reapportionment. If uh, if Bess will help me with the wording on that, okay. So, so I, I, right off the hand, I need to look at what we did ten years ago. It's been ten years. I don't know. Actually, it's been twelve. Well, actually, it has been twelve now. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to appoint Dr. Chris Fuller, uh, Scott Parker, and Henry Crist with Bess, uh, Arthur, and Charlie being there to help. But these three boards will be the ones that actually vote. To, okay. Only thing I would ask Judge on this, I wouldn't mind getting, asking Grad I don't know if you have, they have to be on the board if we do that on the side. They got a expert mapping person. Well, that's, I, you I, get you you contact. Me. Okay. Can I say this real quick? Two years ago, when we were supposed to do this before COVID, Brad has it already pretty much figured out for us. They wasn't allowed to show us show me at the time, but it's very little difference of what we're going to need to do. It's not going to be a big deal like it was yes, 12 years yeah. ago. It was uh, a big right now I can't even remember her name. It's, you know, two years. But, yeah, uh, it's already ready pretty much. Well, that's right. I think, we would have to do. Uh, I think, uh, of course, this committee, I've just appointed the board, but I, I think I need uh, y'all's approval on the appointment just so we say we got it. And then also to run the ad. Okay, could I just ask another question? Did we, could we have a member of the school board on there? No, it had to be people that were not. That were not on the school not board? Not on the school okay. board or any 
Okay, no problem. Right. Um, private, private citizens. Okay, you will. no problem. So, but but you're welcome. We're welcome to have them at the meeting to participate, just like you and, okay. and, and Charlie and Arthur do. That'd be a good idea. Okay. So on the motion, I, I apologize, but I don't know exactly, Justin, how you would want to help with that motion. What about with with uh, well well maybe we'll just help with the ad then appropriate. Uh, yes, yeah, so I can do that. You know, I can look. Up. We'll run the appropriate ads for the uh, no for the planning and zoning. And and accept, and uh, appoint these men, gentlemen as the uh, uh, as the board. And so I present that. Mr. Nigger, uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, I've got second by Kenneth. Back on the <coughs> then Jason. Uh, I have a question for discussion. Okay. If possible. Uh, Bass, I was under the impression I spoke with Arthur a couple weeks ago in regards to their. Uh, trying to do this with the school board being uh, also part of the districting as far as yes. bus busing and then uh, magisterial districts being one and the same. Yes, sir. It's well, their attention. Well, now, they that. have not said they would do it totally like us, but they're willing to sit down with us. You know, the you guys may have to move a little line and them, but they want to work with us to get it hopefully for the sake of the county everybody we can make it the same but we may not be able to but i feel like if we all work together that we can yeah you know? they will need some of them be at this yes and if i can say this maybe. while we're talking about the reason being if we can get them the same it's going to save money ballot confusion uh, i can't, can't tell you how much improvement it will help our, our county if we can get the same and the superintendent is more than willing to sit down and work toward it. And, and I feel like that we can get it done if we're all willing to give a little bit. Okay. Okay. I, I hope that we can do it. Yeah. A any further discussion? I just wanted to make mention that I know 12 years ago when it was done, uh, at the second meeting that I attended, they moved my district. They moved me out of my district. And that's not something that I would want to entertain. And well, I, I don't know that it would be... Uh, it would be the same issue, but where I'm located, it's very questionable because I have a different school board district than I do uh, magisterial and, and I And I understand that. Uh, I really do. And uh, if you remember, uh, Ms. Raff's read a, a Raff and Superintendent, had, we had done that, and then we had a problem, and we won't go into all of that. But there comes a time that everybody can't get what we need. But we need to look at it as the county, uh, it, it affects the finance, it affects, uh, and it's hard if you're not in the election to, to go get ballots for every uh, district split. Because like when the school board and the uh, <coughs> county is not the same, I, we have split ballots. So it's very difficult for the poll workers, for us, cost more money. It's just really difficult, and yeah. you know, I just think it's a time yeah. that it would be really great right. if everybody could just sit down yeah. and just be willing to give. Hopefully, it won't happen this time, Mike. That's a if desire. I, to do. If I remember correctly, if I may, the issue with it was that kind of blew it up. Was the district maps matched, but they didn't realize that the second magisterial district, which matched the Beaver Dam district, was the third school board, board district yeah. mm -hmm. and if you put those numbers then that means you got to have a new election and that's what blew it up and that's why they're different so if they could get it all to match and then just say okay this is the second this is the third then that would solve your problem too i think well but that was what blew it up <coughs> because hey, it was going that way court has to prove them again right after the board does An another problem is they need to be considered there's people driving a long ways just to vote no, no. Everybody in the county is within seven and a half miles to vote with the voting centers. The only person in Ohio County... Until the COVID come, they was driving from Hartford to Rosine to vote. Yes, you're right. But see, that all changed when we went to centers. And the reason that happened is because of the reapportionment. Because when, when the court made their ruling on how we was going to do reapportionment. 
then we had to go by all these laws and you have no choice. We didn't have any choice. And you're right, it was not good. Not good at all. That's why the voting centers, the board and I decided, these voter centers, the voting centers make it harder on my office than the precincts. But it makes it better on the voters because you can go vote anywhere. So everybody now with the voting centers are seven and a half miles from a voting center except one family and it's down on Rochester Ferry. And even I called them to explain and they said it was fine with them. So we are good now and that's one reason that if we can get all of our lines really close or the same, it would be wonderful because now we can vote anywhere. Before when we did this, is it going to stay that way where they can vote anywhere else? Well, I can't promise you anything that legislation is going to do. There's been some talk, uh, talk to the representative. Some people just don't like it and they're just fussing. But, you know, there again, until you do these things and you see uh, how and uh, difficult it is to put on an election, it's not an easy thing, is it, Justice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Justin well, sees, you know what I'm saying? Because it's hard. My goal is when we pack, give out ballots, we want <laughs> everybody to get the right ballot, correct? So we want to do everything we can to lessen the chance of getting the wrong ballot. Because it's difficult. When you've got 20 different ballot styles and you go to a precinct and you know, we're all human and these uh, poll workers that work twice a year, you know, it's difficult. Now, I will say it's been really good and tonight what I'm going to talk about would be some things to even prove it more. Because I think you all know that the election process has been scrutinized like crazy, right? So we need to do everything we can that our county does absolutely everything we can to make the election to me 100 percent. It will never be 100 percent, but we need to do as good as we can because when you run for an office, you want it to be right. You know, a couple votes can make a difference. So well, it was our people didn't go to vote because they had to go so far. Yes, before, absolutely, and I, I understand that, but when, when the court made that ruling, I don't know that they really know how all the laws of can't cross this creek and can't do this, I can't even name them all. And the board at that time, the election board, we told Mr. Bill Smith, you know, we don't want to play favorites, you go by the law, and that's what we did. It was very difficult if you read me. It, it was, was enough to make and, and the anybody board, quit the job. Like the that. board that appointed recommendation was not used. It was Somebody not used. fiscal yes. court drawed their own yeah. afterwards. <clears throat> Hope that's not the case because so much thought goes into to it. And when we as fiscal court look at that, we're looking at it pretty quickly. Yes. I just hope really that we can really, time. truly uh, sit down and really think about it and look at it to what's best for the county as a whole. Yeah. Not us, uh, I'm willing to do whatever that will take to get it good. Okay. Even like it is less work for me, but that's not always means the best thing to do. The motion was to uh, to accept these board members and to uh, advertise. So we we already got a person second for that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, all we need is roll call. Yeah. Bennett. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Callaway. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Kenny? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And Bess, you're yes. up again. I'm up again. So we're going to go right in. Kind of that just sort of to lead in. Can everybody hear me? Without my, my voice carries. Yeah. So uh, what I'm here for really tonight, and this is an unusual uh, situation again, but uh, just so you know, we have 79 days to election, May 16th, okay? So five years ago, the state provided us with what we call electronic poll pass. So I'm gonna give you a little history for the new guys, okay? So the state pay form is under contract and we had to use those electronic poll pass. So what that is, when you go to the election, you know, where you slide your driver's license, pulls up your information, right? So that's what I'm talking about, these electric, uh, electronic poll pass. So the contract up with the company 10X is over. 
So what Frankfurt has done now, they have uh, certified four companies, and we can choose the company that we want. Now, due to uh, the uh, RFP has not come back down to the state, so we cannot right now get bids for this product, okay? So I have an estimate to what these 42 poll books are going to cost. Uh, now, it's just an estimate, okay? So I want you to keep this in mind because I got good news after I tell you this, okay? So it's going to be approximately $75,000, okay? Give or take. No, it's not to the penny. But the good news is the state has $12.5 million to help or pay for these. I cannot promise you when we'll get that money or exactly how much of that money we will get. We're told that we should get pretty much all of it, but I, I don't make any promises to anybody. But I have to have them. It's not something that we have a choice of. Now, what I'm asking for tonight, because I've only got 79 days, so I've got to, as soon as the RFP comes through, then we can order them, get them here. I want you to keep in mind, I've got to train about 120 people how to use these, including myself and my staff. So 79 days is not enough time for me to get all this done if I can't get it approved tonight because if I have to wait time we go through all the process, we order and we get it, it's just going to put us in a real time constraint. So what I'm asking for is that you can approve and uh, me and Justin have talked and he's going to kind of make the motion to what we need and uh, uh, I apologize, I hate that this has happened, but I have really no control over it. This is uh, not a choice that we use this equipment. The only choice we got this time is that we get to pick from those four companies. Now, I did go to every one of those companies and I've checked them all out. Now, I would tell you there's one uh, that I prefer. Um, not has anything to do with pricing. It's because the company that we work with is HARP. And this company has worked with the Ohio County way before I ever got here. They're great customer service. I trust them. They know our maps. They know everything. Now, the company that uh, they picked five years ago, I did not have any trouble with them, but it, other than a lot of stress level because it didn't get things to us as quick as felt like they should. They were out of Florida. I prefer to work with someone that knows our systems, they know my, the equipment that the county has, they know the maps, and I know their customer service. And that's who I choose to go with, and I hope that you guys will trust me and back me up on that. Uh, I, I told Justin, uh, it's a whole lot for this clerk to have a little less stress when it comes to election. So when you have a company that you know has your back and you can work together and talk every day, it's a, it's a huge load off of a clerk. So that's what I would like to uh, get approved tonight. And uh, then you, I'll go ahead, Just I have one more thing after this. But just keep in mind, this approximately $75,000 will be coming back to us. I just don't know when. I can't promise the whole amount, but I feel pretty sure it's going to be the whole amount because they have the $12.5 million to split. So I feel like we're going to motion to. Yeah, I think Justin's going to kind of give I a motion a because of, right, Justin kind of... Yes, Michael has a question. I had a question. I'm sorry. So what, what's your term on uh, support from this company? So why do I like no, this no, company? No, no, what's your, what's your term of support, like year-wise? I mean, how long do they, how long are they investing well, in you at, if we purchase them from, from them? Okay, well, the company itself, the heart company that I deal with now, they are partnered together. Well, what, okay. one of the things that probably applies to that, the, the state, and I get to this kind of in the motion, Michael. <clears throat> so this would, with a lot of this being in excess of $30,000, normally the procedure would be is for this court to seek bids and to see what companies were the lowest bid or possibly uh, those that, uh, uh, that the court would be willing to accept, if not the lowest. <coughs> My understanding is the state has been in negotiation with these four companies because they want to make sure these companies do provide a proper service, especially with respect to our election. 
and that they're entering into a master agreement that would be the agreement between the counties and the service provider. Now, as far as that term, I'm not sure, Michael, on the link. I have not seen the master agreement, but our terms, as far as our contractual relationship with them, would would be would fall under that master agreement that they have with the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So now, I'm, if I'm answer, understand what you're asking me, this equipment, as long as this equipment is working, it would be ours. There right. would be no right. reason to switch. No, not when you switch. I was just making sure that six years from now, they're going to take the phone call from you and make sure that you're, if you have a problem, they're going to be there to support you on that. Well, I, I can't say that about right. any of them being. Right. They could all be. But I will say, there. HARP has been around. And HARP, HARP is one of has the, been here, and with HARP, going, it's a reliable with HARP uh, working with this company, I feel 100% safe. And just at this yeah. price point, I would hate to see us need to try to seek support from some other company to take care of these machines. Right. And, and I understand that, and I wish I could agreement. answer that and give you a, a guarantee of something, but I, I can't. I, you know, like say, uh, I just know HARP is absolutely the best. And, uh, they've been around, I think, ever since. I mean, they're pretty reputable, but I understand. No, the, the customer service is unreal, and uh, I trust this company because they're backing this company. Bottom line, uh, and I do know 10x, uh, and they were very good to us. I had no problem. I do know several counties they got the wrong download for the voting, and I can't even imagine what a clerk would do in that. So, those things worry me, you know, once those downloads, those files come in, and you're putting them out on the vote, and that happens, you know. I don't know how you even fix it myself. Thankful I've never had the experience in that, but I know counties have. I know that HARP will do everything to make it right. It's, it's just, it's sad to say, uh, yeah, we may have to spend a little bit more, I don't know, but there again, in this day and time, the scrutiny over elections, we need to do whatever we can to keep it as safe and as accurate and follow up as we can because people really don't understand the pressure that they're putting on us. It's almost, uh, if you look, we've had uh, 32 clerks. I mean, they're just leaving because of the pressure. The employees are leaving because they don't want the pressure and responsibility of election clerk. It's, it's really, it, it's really <coughs> crazy. So I'm asking you, I guess, maybe to trust me to, to why I need, want this company and, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I just hope you take into consideration that uh, this is a year-round job, just trying to keep the selections going and uh, not asking for any sympathy or anything. I love the job, but it is crucial that it's right. Okay. Quick, quick, quick question as well. I assume every other clerk's having to make the same presentation to, to in every other county at, at some point in time. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, just yeah. to put it in, in, yeah. in perspective. So. Uh, some, maybe if not, I just don't want to wait to the last minute. You know, we, it's all new. My poll workers, it's all new. I had to split them up in groups. I can't train them all at once. So, you know, it takes weeks. It's not like I can do it in one hour. It's a, a, it's a I, lot of planning. I didn't have one question. I mean, I understand you want to start early, but why can't you just go ahead and get an accurate bid from them? Because of the RFP hasn't come through. So when Frankfurt gets that, that is just RFP, a request to purchase, though. Yes. Request to purchase. but you can't just do a bid without an RFP. No. Okay. I, you know, the, I, the that's what they and told then, me. And then did the request for purchase. That's yes, we, we have to have that. Which you know, I've got a general <laughs> idea. You mm -hmm. know, when I went to look at all the equipment, like what per one would cost. So it, it's going to be right there at the seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars. But you're going to get it back. Just keep that in mind. This is just got to pay it up front. You want to get most of it back. So, when I spoke to Bess today, you know, a little bit of my concern. The state has indicated that uh, the clerk doesn't necessarily probably have to seek the counting bidding process in determining who the provider would be because of the master agreement with the state. However, I told her there's really not anything in the record where this court uh, approved any of that spending or anything of that nature. I, 
we are still looking into whether there needs to be a county bid process. And if, if right now we don't believe so, but if for some reason that to be the case, this might be something of urgency that we may have to bring to the court in a special a meeting. Uh, but probably as far as the court entertaining a motion today, I would probably ask the court to entertain the motion to allow vests and discretion to predict, for picking or selecting one of those uh, uh, master, uh, uh, consistent with the master agreement, one of those providers for the, what was it, the e-poll, e-poll uh, e books. E yes. Um, uh, and... Um, uh, after the RFP is, has been established, um, and should we learn that she has to be and that she that she come back to do that? Right now, we don't believe so, but we would we would like something in the record if possible. Or best with, best as indicate she'd like something in the record if possible, indicating she has that approval. Okay. Um, Larry, you and the state can you know pretty much give us a statement saying that we didn't have to, but yeah, yeah. Do we need to add another motion to add and to write a check at, at the time of payment if needed? That, that probably be the safest thing to do because we can we can provide you know one other thing for Ann is she needs something to the auditors <laughs> to see why this court didn't 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 bid out for something over in excess of thirty thousand. Uh, we've got to know <laughs> from the state why that indication or why it may not be needed, and we can provide her with that. But yeah, I think uh, in addition to the motion, her to write the check would be appropriate. If he adds that in his motion, I'll second it. Yeah, I add to Okay, have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion or questions for Bess? Or questions for Justin? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. All right, so I have one more thing. Now, I want to explain what this is. And this is, would not be in the bid the same as the other equipment, okay? This is what they call, it's a scanner. Do not have to have them, but if what happened at the last election, I had a poll worker, and on this one machine, you go up and you can pick the ballot. It, it prints out a paper, so the poll worker hit the wrong button, the person got the wrong ballot. So we didn't have this option before, but now I can get scanners versus uh, the poll worker doing it. So this new equipment that I'm getting will print out, I don't know when you went to vote, if you remember last time, the clerk wrote on a piece of paper which ballot you were to get. Does anybody remember that? So this new equipment that we're getting will print out the paper with the barcode, okay? So now the voter would take this paper with the barcode, I can color code it, have it personally for Ohio County like I, color code in my other ballots. They'll do, set it up ever how we need it. So that voter will take that to the machine, will scan it, much less chances of a mistake, because it's gonna pull the barcode up for that voter on this one machine, and you know, we have two machines. So to me, that there again, lessens a chance of a mistake. <coughs> Now, I just need seven of them, and they're approximately $3,693 is, is what that would be. $3,693. Uh, $93. Now, if we can, I, there again, do I have to have them? I do not have to have them. But again, it's just one more thing that will help us, say, take out the human error in what can happen in our life. Does this print the paper ballot after you scan the Will Yes, it pulls it up and it's, uh, by law, this machine has to be in the voting center. It's for the, it's the ADA for dis disability. So it has to be in there. And what else it does, now, whenever I order all these ballots, since we're uh, a voting center, I have to have ballots for every precinct in those six voting centers, right? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So if I didn't order enough or I made a mistake and, oh my gosh, ran out of 10 ballots, then those voters still get to vote. They would go to this machine and vote, okay? Because it prints out the ballot at the time you pick it on that. So there again, it gives us a backup for our voters is what it does. And uh, there again, I'm human too. I could. You know, when we go up to Horse Branch School, 
you know, I might, I won't send as many ballots there as I sent to the high school. Because I know people probably at Forsville is not going to go to Horse Branch School to vote. So I try to save as much as I can and not waste any more ballots than I have to. But there again, with this, I can cut a little more. Especially after this election, because I <coughs> we're watching every time we have one, okay, where are the voters going? You know, mm -hmm. who goes to the Horse Branch School? Who's going to Rockport? Who's going to Center Town? So, you know, time, it will save us a little money. It's not going to save us a huge amount, but it saves a little bit. So, and I don't guess that $12.5 million in the state was by DC. Uh, no. This, this time, okay, this time, they're saying no. The only thing is their first concern is getting the electronic poll pass. Now, we've been told there's another $12.5 coming, and then, yes, we would, they would buy us other equipment. Now, I talked to the judge, and there's another equipment would be nice to have, but I, I'm fine, because it's like 6500 for one, okay, and we're going to need several. But we, I would be more than happy to wait to see if we can get money for that then, because I can do it. But this little... Well, scanner will be very helpful in two ways. It will help us. Okay. So, if the court can, you know, we have it. If we have it, uh, I would appreciate it. Election. Do I from the election again? Can I just say this real quick? I don't know if the new uh, court members know this. You know, the county, the funds is a set aside in the county. It doesn't come out at a mile budget. It's the county uh, line item that she has to set aside just for election. I just want to ask, and if, if this is a little while before this works out with the, at the state level, this won't put us in jeopardy in any way, will it? Uh, I did transfer uh, some of the budget transfers. You all got it if you noticed were for some anticipated shortages and the elections was one of them and we transferred 25000 in there so I hope that that will cover it. The, you're say, talking about the 36. Well, the, the bulk the of that was for election workers. Yes. Yeah, okay. but I, I think there will be enough in the election maintenance, the equipment and maintenance to cover that. We can revisit that. Okay. If it becomes you a problem. make that motion, Jason? I'll, I'll make the motion that we purchase the seven scanners for uh, Bess, uh, the county clerk's office for the election, from the election account, uh, and have Ann authorize to write the check. Do I hear a second? A second. Second by Larry Moore. <coughs> Did you get the motion right? Is there any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Post like sign, a motion cast, a pass. Now I'm going to ask Thank Lane. You. Thank you, Beth. I'm going to ask Landon to explain what we need here. He's wanting us to approve a uh, contract for the jail inmates bond. Yes, sir. So that's the, the same contract that we've used for years. Uh, that's through CPC. They come by this week, uh, dropped off another copy for me to look at. Uh, of course, I told them that y'all have to look at it and approve it. Uh, one thing that I have added uh, is they're going to start doing our mail for us. So friends and family uh, will send their mail to CPC. Uh, they look over it, they scan it, and then it downloads to the kiosk inside each cell. Uh, that cuts down on big thing contraband coming in through the mail. Uh, we've had some that come this week. We're able to stop it, uh, get that turnover to add them. But you know that's an ongoing battle we have. So if they do this, it'll be no cost to us. And like I said, save on paper, save on deputy's time and it will cut down on the contraband uh, and what we're exposed to. Okay. That's good. Do you want, want to move that? Was there a lot of increase in cost in adding the mail to it? Uh, the mail would be no cost to us. That's good. And they would, uh, like I said, so they, any pictures they download, any texts they would download, uh, and they, I talked to her today, her name's Debbie Waits. Uh, she said that they would, they would look at it and make sure uh, nothing bad was getting in, and then we also have the opportunity to look at it, which we already do. We already look at their incoming mail anyway, uh, so that would not change anything. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to accept the, uh, the new contract. Motion by Michael McKinney, second by Kenneth Callaway. 
Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a copy of that contract? I'll need to put it in minutes. It's uh, low. I'll yeah. load it. Okay. Thank you, Landon. Well, thank you. All the folks say aye. 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 Thank you, Landon. And next we have uh, Charlie. Would you uh, uh, introduce our guest that's going to give us an update on the regional jail? Uh, as I'm doing, I'll say these out. I sat on the committee for the new regional jail. Uh, I've asked Mr. Mr. White to come in. He was at Edison County last night, talked to them. He's going to go around to Butler County and kind of give an update where we are by getting a new jail for three <coughs> counties. So this is kind of a picture word. And uh, there's a board in place uh, from the three counties. Once we put them in place, there they take care of things. And uh, and I will. And they they have made an arrangements with to uh, for for this engineering service and giving us our uh, update now, Kelly. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for letting me come, and congratulations to you. Thank you, sir. Um, what we've been doing, we meet monthly, um, and we meet the third Tuesday? Yep, third Tuesday. Third Tuesday, Tuesday of every month, um, and we had our meeting just a couple of weeks ago, and that's, that's uh, I do a newsletter <coughs> every month, and that's the newsletter that we did uh, for January. Uh, what we've done so far is we've really started working through, number one, putting together a, a kind of a, a calendar of events for what we should expect. Uh, we went and did a tour of the um, Boone County Det Detention Center. It's kind of the design that we're looking at. I mean, we're, we're, we have to put out an RFP for uh, an uh, architectural firm. Uh, we're also going to see another jail, Hopkins County, on February the 2nd. Um, at two o'clock, if anybody wants to go, um, we'll walk through. We, we, what we like to do, and what we did at Boone County is, and you see over on the left-hand side, some of the notes that I put in there. That when we went in, we said, "What do you like about your building today? What would you have done differently?" Because that's that's going to help us a tremendous amount of, of money and time. And they gave us a good list, um, and we'll you know go off of that. We'll put that RFP out for a, an architectural firm and, and have them start. Um, that's the, we're going to talk about that at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, another, uh, when I first started working on this project, I, I gave out some, some locations that um, I used to be with the Department of Corrections, and it just made it, so we, we want to make it convenient uh, for all three counties, number one. Number two is we want to make it convenient to transporting the inmates. And we know that one of our key uh, parts of this project is how we're we gonna pay for it, right? So we know we know you all have been spending nearly a million dollars, Butler County's been spending nearly a million dollars, and Edmondson's about $588,000. So we know that's what's being spent today. Our ultimate goal is to make that number go down. And we do that by having enough beds open that we uh, provide those uh, beds uh, to different other counties, number one, state <coughs> inmates, number two, but most importantly is the federal inmates. And the key to the federal inmates is location of the facility. The ones along the interstate system are the ones where they like to put them because it makes it convenient for them. And it makes it good for us because they pay um, Boone County just renegotiated theirs, and I think they're getting about $88 a day, which would be tremendous for us. Uh, the budget that I did, I, I said $56 a day because I, I don't want to, you know, inflate the budget, spend it, and then they only give us a certain amount, uh, less than that. But I'm being conservative on that. So federal inmates are very important. Uh, we figure that with 350 beds, about 200 are going to be available for other locations to utilize. And that will help us offset the budget. So we started looking at locations. Um, so then, then we found out that there was someone's, I think the judge spoke to the governor about a piece of property where the, the uh, we call it the boys camp. They're off exit, I don't know what the exit number is, but it's two, 
231? Yes, Crown, right there. Where, where the pay toll used to be uh, many years ago. So it's right off the exit. It's wonderful. So I spoke with the, with the governor's office. They are excited about it. Uh, they put me over to the, uh, the Secretary of the Justice Cabinet, and they're in favor of it. And so they have to relinquish ownership of it and give it to the Finance Cabinet. Finance Cabinet is real, really who owns all the property. And then they would be the ones that um, I gave them three options. One, we buy it from them. Two, we lease it from them. Three, they give it to us. Obviously, number three is what we want. Three is the best, yeah. Um, but we'll take number two, and we'll see on number one. Uh, but there's 100 acres there. If, if when this is over, I, I have some maps. Um, we have an architectural firm I called, and they put a drawing of Boone County's jail on the map of the piece of property. So you can see where it could fit. Uh, we, we've all, with, you know, the word's apparently gotten out, and we've got a farmer who's interested in leasing some of the land. So, you know, I don't, I'm not a farmer guy anymore, so I don't know how to lease land and how much it costs and that kind of stuff, but I'm sure somebody on the committee does. Um, so we're just progressing ahead. You see on the right-hand side, that's the items we spoke about on the second, I think it's on the second page, uh, what we spoke about last meeting. The, uh, we've got some issues that we have to address first. Uh, water and sewer, that's two up for the big ones, and then getting the property. So once we get the property and the, and the pricing on the water and sewer, uh, then we start um, working the system. We expect once we turn dirt, it'll take about 600 days, <coughs> give or take a little. Um, but that's kind of that's our goal. Anybody have any questions? I know I've said a lot. Yes, sir. So is Boone County square footage comparable to what we need for our head count? Well, they have 268 in that facility you see there. Um, they're housing more than that. Um, but, yeah, that's... that's uh, I'm sorry, 368, not 268. Sorry. We so it's about want, our size. Don't want we don't want to underbid and underbuild. Oh, yeah, we don't want to underbuild. I mean, if you all had the money, we'd build a thousand beds. No, whoever the newspaper is, don't write that. We're <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people have a heart attack if you know you hear me say that. But the bigger, the better. You look at the jails that built big, uh, and they're all making money, or they're all having surplus money. And uh, the three uh, judge executives, once the committee gets further along, like ready to go with it, the three of us will work and try our best to get some of the federal funds so that we don't have to uh, uh, finance the whole thing. And, and it's really promising that we will. It's exactly right. So when you all go on your trip in February, uh, we'll probably have an agenda for you and say, these are things we want to ask them for. Um, and I'm sure there'll be other things too, but of course, the regional jail is the most important to me. So every regional jail you're saying right now is basically doing well or making money? Well, I would not say that. You know, you have to understand regional jails, there's a lot of them that say regional jail inside the building, mm -hmm. but they're not. They just name themselves that. There's the regional jail, the nearest regional jail here. Oh, there's one in Hazard, and that was an issue of and then they became regional jail because they were forced to do that. Uh, the one in um, Paintsville, that one's a regional jail. Again, there were some issues in the county there. So um, it's Those are all uh, eastern. Yeah, they're all. And then there's one in Beattyville that's, again, the same situation. It's not like what we're doing here at all. Because what we're doing here is the cost of, uh, of building the facility is somewhere around. You know, there's high estimates at $80,000 a bed. I think the more reasonable, the research that I've done is somewhere around fifty-seven to $60,000 a bed. Um, and, and each county, I mean, I don't know your finances here, but I would suspect to build a 300 bed, 350 bed facility here for the county, your bonding capacity may not allow that. And Edmondson County, it wouldn't allow that either in Butler County either. So, 
So if you're in a spot where individually you probably got a problem, but together you don't you have less of a problem. And also these uh, funds, federal state monies, uh, <coughs> they're really more open to multi-county projects. That's the judge is exactly right. City too. Yeah. And in this proposed facility, will this accommodate all three jailers, Edmondson, Butler, and Ohio, as far as office space, or will we still be providing them with office space for county? I think that'll be up to you all. I think in the regional jails that are functioning now, each county still has a place uh, in their courthouse. Uh, we, I mean, we can put space in there. That's not a problem. You will say the regional jails are a little bit different statutorily wise as far as the board uh, will will look to hire the administrator as opposed to the court. Um, and so there's some there's a few differences. Yeah. Are they, they housed under nine one one or anything like that in the I um the answer is I don't know of any. The last one was Hickman County and then Hickman County closed their jail. So it's not in there. Um, and I don't believe the Department of Corrections would allow a 911 center inside the facility. Now, if they built something to the side of it, that's a different story. And uh, another good thing about this property there, there is a building there that would uh, possibly help us with make some money from Class Ds, or or we could put a vocational school there, or something like that. Yeah, uh, there, there's some there's some really good pieces, the buildings on that property, and then there's some that are. It, it's been closed a little while and not much I would suspect not a lot of maintenance has been done um, and so they're in they're starting to show their wear and um, bulldozing is probably the only option left because we don't want to put a lot of money into fixing up <coughs> but they by the gym oh it's fantastic and in these proposed plans what are the what's the exact accessibility to pick up inmates for uh, like for Charlie, for litter abatement, and those type of things. Oh yeah, with the facility that, like the Boone County one, there's multiple programs that you can run through there. SAP. I would, I would hope, you know, if they, you know, if, if, if at that point they're asking what my opinion is to have programming, you'd have to have SAP, MRT, um, work details is what we call that, and correction business to go them out working. You uh, because some people use the word work release. And that's different than the work detail. So have as many work details out working as we can. And okay. the interlocal agreements have that addressed as well. Mm -hmm. I just uh, I meant the layout of this proposed plan uh, before the architecture gets too far along. We'll make sure that that's that that's accommodating where it's easy and we're not easy access to get them in and out. Yes, um, sir. One of those pictures, I apologize, it's kind of small and it's not in color. It's a layout of their facility so you can actually go in and see what, I mean, they're not, la they're labeled on the picture I took, but uh, in there it's kind of hard to see. But they're, yeah, we're going to accommodate for all of that. My advice to the new court members is one of these, at these conferences, go talk to some of these people that's built the jail and get their opinion on them. That'd be my advice for all the court members. Oh, I, I would agree. I would agree. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but I would agree 100%. Um, because what I did was, um, if you want a copy of it, I can get it to you somehow. Uh, I went to the the last eight projects in Kentucky, and I got their their buildings type, their drawing of the inside drawing, the walls and things, and who the architect was, who their construction management company was, who their who did their bonding, I uh, did their budgets, um, and went and visited with all. I mean, I, I know them all, so it's, I can give you good and bads of all of them, but, um, and that's, you're exactly right. The most successful one I'm aware of close by here, and they're very accommodating to talk to is at Litchfield, Grayson County. It and is. I, very you know, and they've got a great story because when they built that facility, I don't know if you guys have been there on top of the hill out there across from the lumber company, the Department of Corrections was telling them not to do it. Uh, and Joey Stanton was the jailer at that time, and he said, no, we're going to build it. We're going to build it, and they built, I think it's 618 beds or something like that. So he was one of the first ones that took, it started out as a house jail, then it went a little bit bigger, then it went a little bit bigger, and then they went 
huge in early the early mid 90s and their budget it's about <coughs> the last time I looked and I haven't looked lately but it's probably around 13 14 million dollars a year giving back to the county a number of million dollars every year too but it's all driven by the federal inmates and they keep a different type of federal inmate uh, that I hope we would keep too um, they're um, they're ice inmates so they're transient they come stay a, a while not long and then if you go out to the jail and see that big there's a row of uh, vans have you, have you seen it they have a row of vans kind of when you pull up the parking lot there on the right hand side and they transport for, for the federal government too, those ICE inmates from, from there in Litchfield to a, little, to a place north of Chicago. And the feds pay them for that. And any of y'all wants the uh, literature, let me know when y'all get y'all's emails set up. I don't know if they do or not. And do they do their, oh, I can't. Yeah, they are. I've got all their emails. Okay, when well, he gets me y'all's emails, can I can send it out to whoever wants it. I would like to see the updated cost analysis on the project. Okay, we have it. We're once we get the we've got the um, the uh, feasibility study, so we know what those numbers are. Um, but they're not architectural numbers. And so once we get the RFP out and back, we start working. The the uh, architect will give us a good hard number um, or a close number, and that way we kind of because we'll take that number and then start negotiating on the bonds because there's a couple of different companies on bonds and so we're going to hopefully play them against each other and get a good rate. Appreciate it. And uh, once the, uh, the, like I said, the jail board that we've all appointed, the three counties, uh, is really running the boat, running the train right now. But when the financing package is done, it comes back to court. Any other questions? I'll hang out till, till we're finished and or after we're finished and if you want to look at the, the plans, we'll, we'll have them out. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, we're down to committee reports. I know the admin code committee, Matt, do you have any report to give or, or just say that you met? Uh, we just met, but we do, I do have one, uh, the wage scale committee, I have a motion. Okay, okay, let's go for that. Okay. So the Wade Scale Committee met right after Admin Committee met. And uh, my motion today is to remove the level one uh, pay scale from the, excuse me, level one from the wage scale and to hire, to only have the hire rate and the um, after. After, after probation rate, yes. Only two on there. <coughs> right now we have three rates on there. So we're just gonna drop level one and just have the higher rate now and the after probation rate. So it'll only be two two levels. Do we have any level one employees currently? Uh, just a handful, a handful. Or the ones that were hired within like the last sixty days or so. <coughs> and it's And it's basically just making it more competitive to draw people to the county to, to work. We start off with a higher 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 scale too. And the budget the way we do the budget is it is every job is budgeted at the level three so this will not affect the budget in any way okay i have a motion by jason to have a second 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 by Ken. Second. so any further discussion on that being that i'll say aye all right Motion carries. Uh, there were other committees that met today, but we had so many big things going with them, we weren't able to uh, finish. Uh, Ann had indicated maybe modification of that motion just a little bit to maybe have an effective date to help out with, with Cassidy and them as far as so they have a, a, a date. Yeah, we did talk about that and I didn't put that in us. We made a big thing as of. What is Sunday? Start, uh, start now. Sunday, like this coming Sunday, is the 29th. Yeah, yeah that would be. Okay, you can include that in so the So next, next week's payday, we'll have the And if I don't pay rates. them through that in a second, I think that's okay for the movement of that. Yeah, well, I forgot, we talked about that. Is there any objection for any of the rest of you? Being an IT, well, let's, let's say I again on it. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we vote again on with the date and the uh, like you, we had uh, many reports today. The uh, uh, admin code met. The uh, <coughs> property owner protection committee met today, but unfortunately, two of the members was on the admin code committee. But uh, Bo Bennett got, uh, but he volunteered to uh, sort of. He volunteered after I grabbed with the arm and dragged him in there. Uh, but he serves on it now as well. So, uh, and it will meet again uh, on the uh, 14th of February at 4 p.m. That's what I was going to ask. I didn't want to know. 14th of February at 4 o'clock. Bring your sweethearts. <laughs> yes, yeah, Valentine's Day. We want to make it a short meeting. So, but anyway, uh, is there any other committee reports? Did the, uh, you, you were planning a meeting with the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Susup met. We changed the name of it. They met, and all we basically is just playing ahead for, we did some planning ahead for next September as far as an event we're doing. So uh, that's really all that all happened there. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at the, the, the event we do every um, September. So. Okay. Were there any other committees to report? If if not, we'll go to the magistrates. Uh, Michael McKinney. <coughs> No, no new business. Jason Bullock, District 2. No, thank you. Bo Bennett, District 3. Uh, no comments. Uh, Kenneth Callaway, District 4. Uh, uh, Larry Morphew, District 5. Phil, uh, has been any more developments on the water for the 3rd District? Uh, no, it, it, there's, it's not. Uh, we was with the uh, water people yesterday, but it is all proceeding, but there's nothing, no new development. What do you mean by proceeding? Uh, it, it's, uh, they're going through grad, they do a certain amount of it, and then it goes to engineering. And uh, the administration again is still going on. Next step will be engineering. And hopefully go into engineering phase with them. Uh, What's the projected date that could start on it. Uh, I don't have one, but it'd be my hope it would be this calendar year. Be calendar year twenty twenty three. Well I I will have I'll get Eric to come in and give us an update the next meeting. And that project that we're talking about, I think most of you got that it was there was a grant from the state that to pay for that project. Yeah. Eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any deadline on that? We have to give it back. If we don't use no. it. Well, it's it's a long it's a long way. First of all, our clock hadn't even started until the grad releases it and gives it to uh, to the you know to the district to the engineer. But I'm I'm going to say it's several years. But we don't want to wait several years. We want to do Would you have any influence with grant? Grant maybe speed it up a little. Yeah, I'll talk to them. See if we can get it. I mean, you know. I hadn't dealt with them much lately on it, but I will. Had they, uh, had they ever looked into maybe looping that, like they said? The they was very, it was, yes, we talked about it, but it was some that substantial. And I know it's more money, but in the long run, it I would mean, keep from the... Britt Guthrie was here this week, and it was a I asked him on Friday, wasn't it, Judge? Yes, yeah, Friday. And he's supposed to be looking in maybe possibly 200000 more for a grant to tie it together. As and that would save a lot of more just yeah. to keep... Yes, but it could start. I mean, we don't want to hold it up. Do you have anything else? Yeah. Uh, did you find out anything on that $500 bill for the fire department? Uh, we gave it to the Firefighters Association. They haven't met, have they, Charlie? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the, the bill for the, where the uh, Beaver Dam built, built the, a man from Cromwell. You don't know about that, Charlie? Oh, I know about that, but I thought it was all settled. It's settled. He, they threatened him with a lawsuit, and he's pending. Well, I, I ain't going to speak for David to be fired, because I know he talked to you at your house up there on a brush fire, and uh, he told me you and him was on the same page, that, and we didn't know about it until... What do you mean the same page? I don't know. That's, he just said you and him talked at the brush fire, and y'all was fine. So, but I'll ask David to come in the next 
fiscal court meeting that way. I tell you what that's going to do if they don't take care of that. It's going to cause people to not pay their dues. Well, right? I ain't going to get into it because I don't know all the legalities. I do know there's a KRS out there. Part, when you pay fire dues, it's How long have you property. been involved with the fire service? Huh? How long have you been on the About fire? About 24 years. I've been since 85, and this is the first time anything like this has happened. But this guy pays, he's got three different properties. He paid his dues on all three of them. They're supposed to be what I, all the years I've been involved, it's been mutual aid. Well, I say, I ain't gonna get into it. I'm but gonna, I'm but trying I'm, to yeah, explain yeah, what I, happened. You said you didn't know her. Well, I, I know about it, but I thought that was all been settled because I thought y'all talked. No, but, it ain't been settled. Okay, fact, well. Because I brought it up to the last court meeting. Well, I wasn't here. And the guy's trying to do right, he's paying them. Fifty dollars a month. I think is that the same guy that had a car fire that come out and they tried that to build insurance. He didn't have insurance on his car. Yeah, they sent the insurance fire. company, but he had liability. Okay. And he'd been paying. I'm telling you, when that gets out in the public, there's going to be people quit paying their dues. Well, I do know the nine fire chiefs voted and agreed on something, and I'll have them bring that. In they agreed for that. I'll have them bring it in here to show you what they okay. voted and agreed on. Our fire chief didn't agree on her, uh, Rosine, according to what he told me. Well, I, only that I can tell you is what they told me. So I just, I'll have them in here. Okay. It ain't my place to speak for the fire association, so. I'll tell you one thing, Beaver Dam's gonna act like that. I have a fire on my property, I don't even want them to show up. Well. It's, uh, but here's one thing we need to look at. So was he in a vehicle or was he on his property? It was a vehicle. Is, that's one thing we need to look at, though. Is it? He was in why are fire dues? What do they? Where do they cover? As far as according to the KRS, the fire dues covers the property. That's something we need to probably look into, or what because, you know. I mean, that's the only thing. When I was listening to both sides, I understand both sides, mm -hmm. but that's also the same saying. Somebody from Louisville comes in and wrecks, and you can't bill them because they pay city tax in Louisville for fire service. So. There's a fight on each side of that argument on both sides. Has this ever happened before since you've been involved? I can't recall. Okay. I can't in the four, we've always had Cromwell Fire Department show up, but nobody from Cromwell Fire Department showed up, not an apparatus or not a member. Mutual aid, Charlie. Mutual, Mutual aid. aid. I agree, but also yeah. I don't know what fire chiefs voted That's on. That's all I got, Judge. Justin? No, I don't have anything good. Anybody in the public got any? Yes, sir. You should sit closer next time. Yeah, I'm going to need you up here. I'm a Baptist. This ain't the Baptist church. <laughs> it's good seeing you, Justin. I don't get to see very much. So, uh, <laughs> the sheriff's office, we sold some vehicles. Uh, I got a check here for $56,770.02. I would like to turn over to the courts. Uh, I would ask that the court uh, put this check into my capital outlay uh, for any future needs. May help with the purchase of anything that we, the sheriff's department, may have, may need, if that's okay with you guys. So. Uh, then I guess I will need a simple motion on that. To allow him to keep the money that he's uh, got. Yep. Uh, yeah, I would entertain the motion. I will entertain the motion. motion. To put it in the account that he motion motion I'll say both. 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 And for him to hand that to Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those like that. Carries. Uh, anybody else got anything for good body? If they don't, we're going to call this meeting adjourned. Yeah.